Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to learn six basic lessons of Lean. These lessons are very important in practical implementation of the Lean approach. So let's understand each of these lessons in very detail. Out of these six lessons, the first Lean lesson is most processes are unlean. What is the meaning of that? If we take any business operation or any processes, we can say that most of the processes from that business operations, that means more than 50% of the work is non-value added. Now, what is meant by the value added and non-value added? Let's understand that in detail. Value added activities are the activities that changes the size, shape, fit, form or function of a material or information for the first time to meet the customer demand and requirement. Whereas the non-value added activities are the activities that consume the time and resources but do not satisfy customer demands and requirements. In other words, we can say that value-added activities are the activities for which customer is paying to us. Now the second question which comes in our mind, how to identify these value-added activities and these non-value-added activities? The answer is use tools to identify value-added and non-value-added activities. And what are that tools? We can use the multiple tools here. We can use the value stream mapping, we can use the flow chart, and we can also use the spaghetti diagram. If you want to do the primary investigation, then we can go for the flowchart and spaghetti diagram. But if you want to go into the detail and identify all the evaluated activities in your business operations, then value stream mapping is the most important tool. If you go into the detail of this first lesson, we can understand that irrespective of your business operations, more than 50% of the work is non evaluated And we need to initiate the efforts to reduce these non-valuated activities. Now, the second question comes in your mind, what is the approach that we need to follow for reduction of these non-valuated activities? And here is a lesson two. The second lean lesson is a primary goal must be to reduce working process. Now, what is the basis for this statement? The basis for this statement is a little slow. And what it says? It says lead time is equal to amount of working process divided by average completion rate. Now what is meant by the lead time? Lead time is the time between the start and end of the process. If you come back to the ultimate goal of the lean process, why we are implementing the lean? Because we want to speed up our processes. That means we are going to reduce the lead time. If you are going to reduce the lead time, we need to work on two entities. One, either we need to reduce the working process or we need to improve the completion rate. But if you are going to reduce the working process, it requires intellectual capital. That means you need to identify ways and means to reduce the working process. But if you are going to improve the completion rate, then it is little bit difficult because you want to add the financial capital to it. And this is again impacting your return on investment or other cost. So it is always preferable to work on a reduction in working process first. That means we should start with the reduction in working process and also supported by some of the activities to improve the completion rate. Now, the next question, how to reduce the working process? And that is a lesson number three. This third lesson is reduce the working process by creating a pull system. How to create the pull system? For creating the pull system, we need to follow the seven step systematic approach. We are going to understand this seven step approach with the help of this diagram. Please look at this diagram. In this diagram, we are having the input, then we are having the working process limit, and at the end, we are having the production or priorities defined to process. Now, let's understand what are these seven step approach. In this seven step approach, the first step is about identification or calculation of the required lead time for customers. That means we need to define what is the required lead time for customers. Once we identify what is the lead time for the customer, then in second step, we need to determine completion rate for your product and services. Here, why we are looking for the completion rate? Yes, you are right. The basis for this is we are going to use the Little's law. Once we identify what is our completion rate, then use the Little's law to determine what should be the maximum working process that is allowed to you. Once we identify what is the maximum working process is allowed to you, then Step number four 
cap the active working process at this maximum working process. Once we have defined our working process limit at work, then in step number 5, we need to put all incoming work into the input buffer. And then in step number 6, develop a track system for prioritization or for determining which incoming work to be processed first. For this prioritization, we are going to use three step criteria. That means we are going to use what is its difficulty level, what are its competitive advantage and what are the profits in dollars after completion of that work. After completion of all these six steps, let's come back to the Little's law. Yes, now it's time to work on the completion rate. That means in step number seven, we are going to continue with the other process improvements to improve the completion rate. In other words, in step number one to six, we are focusing on reduction of work in process. Whereas in step number seven, we are working on improvement of the completion rate. If you look at the example in this diagram, let's say we are having the exit rate of 20 units per day and we are having the lead time of 2.5 days. In this case, we need to restrict our working process so that we should have our average cycle time less than 2.5 days. To maintain that average cycle time below 2.5 days, we need to control our WIP because average cycle time is the ratio of code WIP divided by exit rate. As our exit rate is 20 units per day, so we need to limit our working process to 48 units so that we should have our average cycle time of 2.4 days, which is less than our lead time. Now, what is meant by the WIP limit? At any point of time, we should have less than 48 units that are working process. If you are having more than that, then we are stopping the input to this working process. And only units are the work that will be allotted to this working process if the units from the working process are changing their status from working process to completed. The fourth lesson of the lean is related to process cycle efficiency. That means process cycle efficiency allows you to quantify the opportunity for improvements. What is meant by the lean process? A lean process is one in which the evaluated activities are more than 20% of the total cycle time of that particular process. And if you want to identify what are the value added activities time for the any particular process, then we can use the value stream map or we can use the time value map. By using the value stream map or by using the time value map, we are going to identify what is the value added work or what are the value added activities, what are the waste required for business reasons. That means these are the non value added activities, but that are required to run the operations or business. And the third, what are the real delays and waste in your business operations. If you come back to the process cycle efficiency, what is the world class efficiency? If you are belonging to the continuous manufacturing, then the world class efficiency is 30%. But in typical cases, it is landing around 5%. If you are belonging to the services or business processes, then the world class cycle efficiency is 50%. And in typical cases, it is 10%. And if you are belonging to the business processes which are creative or cognitive, then in that case, the world class cycle efficiency is 25% and the typical cycle efficiency is 5%. So we can say that there is a huge gap between whatever the cycle efficiency that we are having now and what is the world class cycle efficiency. The cap analysis between this current cycle efficiency and world class cycle efficiency will help us to identify the areas of this non valued activities. So we can remove this non valued activities and thereby we can improve our process cycle efficiency. Lesson number five is not new to us because it is talking about the Pareto principles. That means 20% of the activities causes 80% of the delays or waste in your business operations. That means identify this 20% of the activities and start immediate working on it. This 20% of the activities which are contributing in 80% of the waste are also called as time traps. And as I already explained, by using this time value map, we can identify what are the valued activities, what are the required waste and what are the non valued activities. And identification of these non valued activities will help you to take immediate actions on them. After understanding all these five important lessons of Lean, let's move to the lesson number six, invisible work can't be improved. The meaning of this lesson is everything from your business operation must be visible. Anything which is not visible cannot be improved. And if you go into the detail of it, we can understand that 
there is a different approach we need to use for the manufacturing as well as for the service industries because if you go for the manufacturing it is very easy to see processes physically we can also trace the flow of work we can also walk the flow and see the working process we can also find any waste from our processes and can take the images step but it is little bit tricky for the service industries because in service industries work is largely invisible and it is very hard to see what is working process now what is the solution for this for the service industries we need to implement visual management system how to implement this visual management system well it takes four step approach in first step we need to establish and display work priorities in second step we need to visually display daily process performance in third step create the communication system between employees between departments and across the departments and in step number 4 provide the feedback to everyone for continuous improvement if you look at this diagram that is indicating this visual management system it is indicating what are the activities that we are going to do or what are the units that we are going to process what are the units that's already completed but are in testing phase what are the units that in progress and what are the units that has already completed so this will help you to understand what is a working process and you can take the actions so that you can reduce the working process so these are the very important six basic lessons that will help you in practical implementation of the lean approach for references i have taken some part of this important concepts from this book of lean six sigma for services by michael yell george this is a very good book if you want to learn the lean six sigma for service industries at the end of this video if you want to learn the lean six sigma in most practical effective and efficient way please visit at vijayshape.co/join and vijayshape.co/training thank you for watching and see you in the next video